Hello, David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. This is a State of the Union address, a State of the Union of No Time to Die. And it's it's been a little bit since I've talked about No Time to Die, but even worse, it's been a little bit since I've talked to this gentleman, Jerome, Dutch <laughs> Bond fan. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm very excited to, to once again uh, be featured uh, on The Bond Experience. Can't wait to dive into this. I tell you what, I'm I'm glad you feel that way because I was thinking about who can I have this conversation with because I really did want to talk about no time to die even during this quiet period and I want to yes. I've got a I've got a list of questions for you brother. All right. Um, and I Bring also thought about right. I thought to myself, all right, who is that individual that isn't going to pull any punches, doesn't mind sharing his opinion, and <laughs> is going to tell it like it is? And and you know what, my mind wandered right back to you. All right. Well, I, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> well, it's a huge compliment. A huge compliment. Absolutely. Hey, before we get started, um, what are we drinking tonight? I know you and I usually share. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have... Um, you probably aren't too familiar. I wanted to go with a Heineken, but I, it turned out I was out of it. So I just got a, a really, it's nothing fancy. It's a Dutch lemon-like oh. beer. Very refreshing, uh, low alcohol, just uh, something straight out of work for the early evening. Amstel, You're drinking right? something fancy, probably. No, yeah, no, no. I, right. I do have a, a martini with a couple olives. Ah, awesome. All, although it's not quite a martini, it's uh, it's just vodka. So there is no martini. There's no. <laughs> it's just vodka. But you're on something strong. Yeah. Is it afternoon on your end? Or, or it's um. It's only one forty-six. It's oh uh, wow. It's just a little bit after lunchtime. So you are really early with this. <laughs> it's, hey, a, it's, it's a it's a clear always, liquid. It's always evening somewhere in the world, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, I was drinking for your time period. That's all. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, before we get started, we've got our libations. We've got our topic. For for those that might not be aware, although your YouTube has has just soared monstrously, um, can you tell people what what is Dutch Bond fan all about? Okay. Yeah. Um... I think most people would mainly know me for the, the review series I did, the, the recapping 007 series, because mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the one thing, like the, I think one of the episodes or a couple have reached the half a million mark now in terms of views. So the, those are the, 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 big, the big thing. Yeah. And like you said, I might be known for a, a, bit of, a bit of the strong opinions, a little bit of humor here and there. It's often uh, very uh, corny humor, but it, people seem to like it for the most part. <laughs> well, it's it's honest and it's authentic. And I had just I, I just did a thank you video where I was thanking people for not holding back their opinions, like sharing it, which makes the variety of our community so much more interesting that way. All right. So so we've got to walk through something because we want to talk about no time to die. And, I, you know, when I when I talked to a friend about no time to die and, and you said something very interesting when we were just getting Skype oriented, you said, listen, it's been a long week. I really need a little bit of James Bond talk, you know, because yes, it's right? right. Isn't it sometimes like therapy to talk about this stuff? Oh, uh, to all of us, isn't it? It's, it's like, you know, having a long day. And usually, at least for me, I, I don't have that outlet with my friends or my girlfriend to, to talk about all this nerdy stuff. And then, you know, you go online and talk to people like you and, and, and Kelvin or whatever. And, the barn community, and uh, we can talk for hours. <laughs> it's true. You get you get kind of your fix, right? Is what you do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Al that's, although that's quite a few people in your life know about your bond pension because I just saw a video where even at your school, I think all the kids knew you were Mr. James Bond. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. I sent you that video. Yeah. Um, so I told some of the the because I'm a, a teacher uh, in my daily life on uh, on children's schools, so. It's, so if they ask about my personal life and hobbies, that I usually tell them I'm a Bond fan. I don't exactly tell them I have a YouTube channel. Some kids seem to find it, though. I, I've had that on a few schools where they're like, hey, hey, I found your uh, YouTube channel. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even tell you I have one. They, they find out everything. But, uh, uh, yes, in my daily life, a lot of people know I do it. But I'm not sure a lot of people watch my stuff. I, you know, my parents know about it. My friends, they, they are aware. They think it's cool. But, you know, it's not that it's their interest or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and it's interesting because even the therapy aspect, it's like we really do have the Bond community to go to. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off with that. 
yes. mindset. When you first heard about No Time to Die, and I, this is already going back a ways. Yeah. I think yeah. I remember you were incredibly excited, yeah? Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's always whenever a new Bond film gets announced, uh, by the time that time it was still Bond 25, that's when you get your first tingles. Like, and it, it took a while for that Bond 25 announcement because like 20... 16 and 17 we, we literally had nothing out from we called them. it bond 25 for like two plus years yeah 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 and then uh, as soon as we we the title for me i don't know what it was like for you because now we really got used to it but i really had to it really had to sink in it felt like you know another tomorrow ne tomorrow never dies or live and let die die another day we've had so much of those titles so now it's sunk in but um i yeah, went through it i went through it very thing. excited yeah, with the title, I went through an incredible amount of excitement because I thought it sounded like it could be a movie in the franchise. Like when I think yes. about Blu-rays all stacked up, I could yeah. imagine No Time to Die. And then I started reading everybody's reaction, which was like very lukewarm in a lot of cases. And then I'm like, wow, maybe it is cliched. So I went up and down, but I settled yeah. on the fact that I, I kind of do like it. Yeah, no, for me as well, I had several opinions on it. It also, at first, it looked really out of place in, in Craig's films, like the, the font for Casino Royale, Quantum, Skyfall, Spectre, and then completely different, No Time to Die. At first, it felt like, huh, something like a, huh, all right, that's, that's yeah. different. Yeah, but now, uh, yeah. Not quite finished. It's, it's well, No Time to Die. It's, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of start off because I'll tell you, I think about it as an evolution of No Time to Die these last few years, because you get the title come out, you get a bolus of excitement, and then you're looking forward to a premiere. I mean, there was no such thing as COVID-19 in our heads and, oh, no. and minds or anything like that. And then, you know, rugs get pulled away. Things get delayed because of directors. Things yeah. get delayed because they needed more time. Things get delayed because there's a pandemic. Things get delayed because there's a pandemic. Um, yeah. And now we have a target, a target where they say April. Yeah. I tell you, I have felt like Charlie Brown and Lucy with the football in many cases yeah. where it's almost, it's, it's, it's harder and harder for me to get excited. Yeah. I do get excited, but to me, it's almost like a guarded excitement. How do you feel? Uh, similar. I, I'm kind of losing steam on, on getting excited for it over and over. You've probably saw that video that, uh, haphazard stuff did like a bond fan waking up and it's like we're waking up to another delay of no time to die i mean that that's part of that's kind of how we feel it's like oh another one and another one i mean it, it should have come out a year ago we would have already been at the stage of talking about the movie in retrospect yeah. you know in that kind of sense so um and every time the hype starts i do get the steam a little bit back but then you know the balloon pops again and that happened like three or four times now, so it's it's hard to to keep doing that. Um, yeah, right now I'm, I'm I'm kind of the hype is a bit gone, but hopefully it will be recharged again by the time we reach April, if that's when we're getting it this time. <laughs> well, that's and that's going to be part of our our questions later. I mean, because I think for me, I, I'd love to get your opinion on this. Um, you know they did it they did a lot of marketing around this as they should yeah. it's it's a bond film it's part of the bond right. franchise and i was really actually very impressed i have to say being a marketer myself that they've been able to continually do marketing even with the stop starts it's no small feat to do that but what i'm finding is and and i don't i want to get your opinion on this in the beginning they would put a couple of images out and for weeks or, or a trailer for weeks, people would be talking about it. Now they put stuff out and it's like two or three days and then it gets quiet again. Yeah. And it's almost like the marketing is not having the full effect it used to have. Yeah, I think that's the, I think they, they must have like discussions about that. Like how much more can we market at this point? I mean, they did the character posters, they did like, uh, I'm sure you know that even at the Dutch train station, they had this huge James Bond experience thing where you could walk in yeah. and do a gun barrel. Um, the, the trailers, they've made a new one for the latest release that should have come out uh, um, this November. So they, I think, I'm curious to see what they're going to throw at us by February. I mean, well, how much more can we be uh, hyped in with new marketing? We've seen pretty right. much 
what we've need to what we need to see. Yeah, they had talk shows. They had Saturday Night Live. They had I would I would imagine for the most part from a marketing standpoint they had most of the brands who were yeah. going to you know they really wanted a movie around yeah. their releases and launches. They've launched. I mean I th I don't think you've had things like Globe Trotter. There's a handful of luxury brands that haven't launched, but even Aston Martin. I mean they had their launches and things like that. So. I, I would assume there's something that they're holding on to or they're going to create new things because it's such an important movie for them. I, I hope they do for, for, for their sake. I mean, they, they, they got to earn something for this, this movie. And I, I just hope that the COVID situation allows for, for the public to go to the movie and, and we're able to see it uh, by then. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to, we're going to hit on that subject. Um, yeah. I think I can safely say that you and I are in the camp that we're movie maniacs in the sense that we love to go to the movie yes. and have the theater experience. Is that correct? Absolutely. Of course. Yes. If, if, if I have any say in it, I, I wouldn't want to have it on uh, director streaming. I can see the arguments for it. I mean, if, if, if this situation continues... Um, that's the way we're we're probably gonna be forced to see it on streaming first. But it's like it's an event, a new Bond movie. You, yeah. you know it as much as I do, and you've probably been to more premieres in in your lifetime uh, of the Bond film, so you know exactly how special it is every time. And it's such an event to, to be missed. It's one of the biggest events for the year for us fans. Yeah, that's well, you hit it. Um, you nailed it. It's not so much seeing it just in a theater it's that community event it's going to yeah. the parties it's seeing friends and it doesn't have to be walking the red carpet in london it, it could be doing something in your backyard it could be going out to dinner with six of your friends and your family and having right. this big it, it's basically a week to week to week celebration yes. of the movie yes exactly and then after that comes all the talking about your 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 theater experiences with, with the other fans in the bond community and my dream was to, to, to and see it with all of you guys and, and i mean how cool would it be to be with all the the people that you invited on the global bond day and uh, with all the webcams to be able to sit with all a lot of those people and, and see it and chat afterwards with, with some martinis maybe we'll go to a karaoke bar and sing nobody nobody does it better drunk or something you know, <laughs> that, that's the way I we love should that. do it i love yeah. that <laughs> but by the way, so so here's here's my big question then, because it's been something that's vexing me is, you know, now that I've seen and I'm sure you have as well, what's happening with Wonder Woman 1984, where yeah. they're premiering it on HBO Max, that'll be streaming. And then they're also going to have it in theaters for those that can make it to theaters or those that feel comfortable going to a theater. Could we be in the same position with No Time to Die in April? Oh, that's an interesting one. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's really hard to say because I've had these thoughts like the, the COVID situation, it changes from week to week with, with the developments. I mean, I wouldn't be, and this, this might be controversial, but I wouldn't even be surprised that by that time we'll have like an early vaccine and maybe we will be, have to be vaccinated to, to see the movie. I, I can see the memes already of, of Bond fans you know, all getting a vaccine just to be able to see the film. <laughs> but... I don't know about all of that. I don't want to get too political on this, but um, it's no, it's scientific. I mean, it's yeah. um, I'll just tell you around here, and I work in the pharmaceutical science, you know, medical based oh, that's um, right. yeah. industry. Um, we're just just a few short weeks away from what's called phase one of the vaccines, where it's going to be right. healthcare professionals, first responders, and um, more than likely uh, people over seventy years of age. And then yes. phase two is going to be uh, people that with comorbidities or ailments that are at risk or at targets. And then phase three will be kind of the next line of individuals. And then phase three and four are going to be uh, people like you and I, you know, healthy yeah, individuals that can hold our drink. Um, I so, so I dare say if it goes the way that the pharmaceutical industry would like it to go, there yeah. will be vaccines distributed um, in a pretty global fashion adequately. Yeah, I see. I'm just curious whether or not like movie theaters or airline companies or big parties will, will go as far as to people ask them to be vaccinated to allow for, for you or to, evidence. to go in. 
Yes, like you need yes. to have, like when you fly, you need to get a COVID, you know, you, you yeah. need to have a COVID test. You need to have evidence of that. You know, there was discussion. I don't think they're going to do this. And now I know we're getting out of bond, but this is an important discussion where they were going to have um, like medical bracelets that say that you were vac vaccinated. Yeah. But then they talked about the very next day overseas, those would be counterfeited and you could buy them on eBay and oh, things yeah. like that. That's, that's, that's yeah. It's that's a question, happens. but, but even let's say vaccination aside, yeah, I think there's a bigger question of number one: Are movie theaters going to be in business? Will they be around by April? And number yeah. two: Will people be comfortable, no matter what, to get uh, in large groups of individuals again so soon? I, I have doubts. You know, it's April seems far away, but yeah. COVID doesn't seem to go away anytime soon, as it looks like now. So I know it's I know. for me, it's hard to answer. I mean, there is a possibility. We can't negate it. We have to almost yeah. get ourselves psyched for it that we could all be watching it like this. Yes. You know, there could be a virtual party or we could be watching it on, you know, uh, you know, Apple streaming. I mean, there is a potential for all that. Right. Um, what I would miss is like, you know, Operation Barracuda, you yeah. know, that we were going to have at the casino that you and yeah. I, you know, you and I were going to be going to parties together and oh. like stumbling over each other. And there's just something so magical about that. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I totally was excited for that. I was also invited for, for, for a lot of events like that, like a city tour towards um, uh, film locations in London. Uh, there was going to be an evening event with like a Bond quiz with a room full of Bond fans, you know, stuff like that with Bond prizes. I mean, sign me in, you know, a, a Bond quiz with cocktails in the evening in like a big restaurant or something. Yeah. That was the plan. I mean, that that's right. the whole thing we're missing. So I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop a bomb of a question on you then. If somebody came to you and said, "Well, you could have your movie that you've been dying to see in April, mm -hmm. um, but you know it's going to be like Wonder Woman. You know, probably be online, and mm -hmm. it might be in theaters, but you definitely can't have parties. Or you wait until October, the end of October, and all the parties in the world, big yeah, groups, yeah. you can you can you know lick each other's forehead." Um, what do you pick? I'll probably pick October. I mean, I may as well wait like six months more to, to, to be able to have all that. What is six months more? Yeah, something like that. You know, when you've been waiting six years. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we may as well top the golden eye uh, and license to kill gap uh, in a good fashion <laughs> if, if we're ever going to top it. It is so true. All right, so we've got some strangeness going on with No Time to Die that you and I have encountered because of these delays. So it was just announced that Billie Eilish, No Time to Die, the song, was nominated for a Grammy in a year that the movie did not come out. Yeah, weird, Now, I mean, is this strange to you? Yeah, and I've, I've had thoughts about that by the time the movie came out with the first delays, like how, like, this may may affect her Oscar win if she if she if she gets one. I mean, the previous two got an Oscar for their songs, so I was kind of already thinking in that mindset. But it's weird, like the movie didn't come out, but they well the song was released, so you know it's. But still, it's a song for the movie. Yeah, very. It's it's one of those cases of strange things happening because of because of COVID. I wasn't even aware she she was nominated. By the way, just I'm completely. Uh, I think it happened like two days ago. And but I the, see. the funny, I mean, not the funny news, the big news, like Variety reported this and they, they gave it its mention. But of course, the whole article was about how crazy is it is that yeah. this movie has been delayed, delayed, delayed. And yet yeah. here comes the Grammy nomination for the yeah. movie song. Yeah, but even the song has been out for a, a good while now. It's, it's always been like more than a year we've, we've had the song. Much more, actually, I think. You know what? That's a really good point. There was something that came up on my Facebook just this morning and I, I couldn't believe it. Oh, I know what it was. It was um, Good Morning. I think Good Morning America or the Today Show. I think it was the, the Today Show right. was in New York City in Times Square with all the people from No Time to Die, all the actors getting ready to like oh, yeah, that watch the movie. Yeah, Remember yeah, Remy yeah. Malek was there, Daniel Craig. Yeah, uh, that was a long time ago too. It was a year ago. It was a year yeah. ago today. And I yeah, thought oh, to today, myself, I, I cannot believe that was a year ago. Yeah. Oh yeah, I thought it was shorter too. Yeah, yeah, and, and by that time when we had that event, 
we still felt like we were right on the corner of the release at that point. It, it, it's like it, the last steps. Yeah, and it's almost like with this movie, it's it's kind of a funny thing to think about the title, and I have thought of this. No Time to Die, there's no time associated with this movie. This movie <laughs> doesn't really have a time structure. It's like, was it six months? Was it a year? Was yeah. it six years? Was it four months? Yeah. There's no time associated with it. No. Yeah. I, I, I was already thinking, like, I when I do on each of the movies, I always do a little retrospect of the production info that, that, that pre, pre goes before the movie. With the No Time to Die review, when I get to that, the production bit alone, it's such a long story. You can write a, a book, a, a whole video on just all the stuff that happened, like right with, when we had a different director and, and all the stuff. Like, I mean, one of the first news blip we, blips we've got from Motown to Die was, I believe, like Michael G. Wilson and Barbara Broccoli have, have rented a helicopter, something like that. That's how it started, like years ago. It, it, it's been an incredible ride. And, you know, I, I've got to bring up something to you because, uh, number one, I feel comfortable having these conversations with you, and vice versa. And nobody's watching this. There's nobody's watching <laughs> this. Um, but very recently, in a women's magazine, on the cover, it was announced that Nomi is, in fact, 007. And a part yeah. of me, when that happened, I want to talk. I, I was very interested in talking to you about this because, number one, I felt like that was almost um, a mistake. Like, they that magazine had probably thought you know, we're going to publish this, it's going to be around a movie. And then when the movie got delayed, maybe nobody called them and said, don't do this. And I, I know yeah. I'm probably not giving credit where credit's due, but it's a very strange place to make a big announcement, even though I think most people, they were assuming that. But yeah. still to have an announcement on the cover of a magazine yeah. saying the new 007, that was a big way to announce yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a whole can of worms that that got open with with those. Uh, now that it's kind of confirmed as well, I mean, I did a video on this like also over a year ago, maybe like July last last year, when it's already it was already kind of confirmed. But now Lashana herself has confirmed that she is 007. Yeah. To to the casual fans, they they really get confused that she's the new Bond. I mean, my mom texted me like a, a couple of weeks ago, like so. This new woman is is Bond, but no, she's not Bond. But but I just read this. It says she's the new 007. I'm like, yeah, that's right. She's she's 007. It's you know people well, think it's synonymous with Bond. It's very hard to explain. And yeah, so I can't blame them either. For yeah, that. exactly. And here's here's what I hope it isn't. Here's my hope. Um, right. It feels to me. And, and this is, you know, again, everybody's entitled to their opinions. It feels to me like potentially a gimmick yeah. to exactly do what you just said people are doing, which is to talk. Yeah. Um, I've always felt like the Bond movies fill the plot points with strong women exactly. without having to say, let me take the piss out of Bond. In fact, I, I got to tell you something very interesting. I don't know if you started reading this book. Oh, this I is, haven't yet. It's amazing. Mark Edlitz's new book. But in here, he talks about uh, Timothy Dalton's third movie. And one of the oh, right. things the writer of that uh, movie says, the guy that did the treatment, says um, for every movie, Barbara Broccoli and, and Michael G. Wilson ask a question. And they asked him on this Timothy Dalton movie, how much do you want to take the piss out of Bond? And I think that there is a very uh, dangerous line because... I love, as I'm sure you do, having strong women in your life and yeah, strong women in movies. Exactly. But if you have to do it to the detriment of your core character, exactly. that's very problematic. So the 007 thing to me, if it's if it's a gimmick to get people talking and if it's also to take, you know, the piss out of Bond. Yeah. Do you really need to go that far? Exactly. It's like hearing myself talk in the, in the way you, you said that. I've been talking about this. This is a topic I've been talking about with my friends. And you're right. I mean, the plot probably wouldn't have been any different had Lashana be 003, you know, or, or yeah. whatever other number. But it's, it's because of the statement. It gets people talking. And I don't know her name, but there was like, she was sitting like, yes, it finally happened. They're like this, like... Lashana is the new 007. You could tell this woman knows nothing about Bond. She has no affinity with it whatsoever. It's like 
an older sister wanting to steal the toy of her younger brother, who's crazy about this toy, just for the sake of it. She was so almost relieved as if, as if you know, Bond is no longer this white misogynist male that, that can have, it's, it's none of that. I mean, Bond has always been, like you said, that we've always had the strong women. We've always promoted this. You can go back as far as the 60s and see strong women and, and, and gone being taken to piss at without it being a gimmick. And, and this, yeah. this feels like the opposite. Uh, it's yeah, very if, you, if you watch the Connery movies, which I've just rewatched them in the last two months, I've watched them yeah. all, every uh, single one, and they're fantastic. The women, and this is back in the 60s and the way it was written, the women take the mickey out of Bond without it being it. overt. I mean, they do cut him apart and they do come across as very strong. Is there sexual tension? Is there flirting? Yes. Yeah. I mean, but that's, it, it's interesting too, because a lot of, you know, female friends and male friends, they go to Bond movies to watch certain things. You know, yeah. Bond has to be this capable individual, but I even hear women talk about it as they like to see a sexy man with sexy women driving sexy cars, doing sexy things with amazing stunts. Like, exactly. That's it. So exactly. if we're, if, if we're looking to say, hold on a second, this is going to be the movie that, you know, makes Bond look like a, a doter, you know, and just kind of like bump into walls where everybody else is doing the main things. It could be problematic, I think, for the franchise. Yeah, I that's that's exactly it. And to me, Bond is the escapism, kind of like like you mentioned, it's the one thing where there's enough politics and crazy stuff going on in the world. You guys just had the, the, the most uh, big elections in American history in terms we of did? how... We did? Something went well, on with an well, election? Exactly. That's that's the kind of what Bond can make you do. You just escape from the real world. And then I hate it that they, even there, they have to get politics involved. It's. Uh, I also kind of kind of got it when, you know, I'm, I'm all for the Me Too movement and stuff, but when Barbara really started talking about that after so much no news of Bond, and that's what they push. It's like, I don't want to see that. Not the Bond fans want the... It's, I, it's I think the same with... I want to give them a little bit of um, nod in the sense that I think it's a very tough job that they have where from a PR standpoint, they've got to seem very topical and in touch, right? They've got to seem like yeah. they're embracing... Yeah genders and the newest things. Of course, of course, any, I mean, they're a corporation. Any corporation needs to do that from an outside of standpoint. Course. Yeah, yeah. But she also has said that Bond will be a man. You know, she has kind of like drawn the line in the sand. What I'm talking about is this, the, the script. If the script is constantly ripping Bond apart to the detriment yeah. of the character, then it's not badass Bond anymore. No, exactly. It's something else. It, it comes at the cost of him, and that's that's yeah, that's the, the the situation I have the problem with as well. And I just hope that we'll still be rooting for you know, it's we'll still be he will still have his badass moments. He'll still be you know the the guy that we were used to from him. And it's not just you know stay in your lane like that line that Lashana has and and that stuff at the cost of him every time. Um. All right. So we we sewed. You know, what we're concerned about, we sowed the delays, we talked about that. Let's lift everything up now, all right? What is it, even when you watch the trailers, what is it about this movie that gets you so excited? What do you love about this so far? Oh, the, um, it looks great. The cinematography, it looks spot on. All the trailers we've seen, they do get you excited. And I've seen some of the trailers in the theaters when I went to see other movies, and the movie pops up and it's the Bond theme. You're immediately like, "This is this is my thing." You, you almost feel like, "Hey guys, do you see this? This is <laughs> this is the the thing I'm a fan of." I'm proud to see it. It's it it looks great. I love the the Gatling guns with the DB5, oh. the stunt with the bike, the, all of it amazing. Um, I do like that they brought back Madeline. She's not like the my favorite Bond girl or anything, but I've all I'm always a fan for bringing continuity back in some way, you know, yeah. profiles in it again. There's definitely stuff to be excited about. Another thing is they say they're gonna wrap out wrap up all the the storyline of the mm. great movies. So I'm I'm curious to see in what way. So th there's yeah. definitely a lot to to be excited about there. I'm I'm super excited too. I mean every 
trailer, every making of, every image that comes out, I think it looks, to your point, the it looks amazing, especially compared to like, you know, the kind of the specter filter that, you know, we we didn't get too jazzed about, yeah. but it yeah. looks beautiful. I think it yes. sounds amazing. I think it looks, and, and I said this to anybody that will listen to me, Daniel Craig looks like he's really acting like Bond in this. I mean, he he really does some amazing stuff. There isn't actually yeah. one scene that I've watched where I'm like, ooh. Like you can watch no. Die Another Day and you look at the kite flying thing in the yeah. trailer and you're like, what is that? But yeah. this just looks amazing. I agree. And so does Craig himself. I mean, this is if this is his final movie, he, he oh, aged shit. well. He looks good. Yeah, Simon Waterson and him have done some amazing things in the training. Yeah. But but he, yeah, he's he still looks, very fit. He, that's, but, but again, you know, and again, not to go back to what we just talked about, that's why it's like, I, I almost feel like true Bond fans, like us, you know, these fanatics as mm. we are, are almost feel like I'm watching the movie next to Craig in a way, like rooting for him. Like, yeah. dude, I want this to be like your best movie. I want this to be amazing. Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, AJ, uh, what, what's his name? Is Sir Caldry? Real? Yes, the guy that, that wrote uh, uh, Some Kind of Hero. Yeah. Um, he made a, a perfect analogy to that, how we Bond fans are like sport fans. Like mm. we're rooting for our team. And when they get to the match, which is when the movie comes out, we want them to play well. We're rooting for them. But we're also the guys to criticize them first. We want the managers to do good and, and all yeah. the stuff that comes with it. But we don't like it when outside forces come in and comment on our team because that's when we get defensive and i read when i read that i was like yeah yeah that is the way it is that's to us a Bond really fans. we're very sensitive about it so yeah that, that credit goes to aj for for writing that but um i completely agree with him on that one that's a really great point and and i'll go so far as to even say you know when we talk about things in a very passionate way, even if it's things that we're worried about or, you know, we don't want this to happen, it comes from the most positive source of just yes, this yes, to be wonderful. Me. Like we are like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, he's up at bat, you know, yeah. lean into it, lean into it. Why didn't he lean into it? Like it, those exactly. types of things. And and it's funny too, it's the, the one movie I go to the first time I see it and I'm kind of a bit nervous and not to not nervous for what I, for the storyline, but kind of like you just wanted to do good. I remember being very nervous to see Skyfall because I wasn't the biggest fan of Quantum. I know you, you like it quite a bit more. Um, I saw your video with Calvin, but uh, I, I remember being very nervous. Like, I hope this does good and being so relieved the first, my first viewing on Skyfall that it, that it was indeed a good movie, in my opinion, at least. And I, and I can't compare it to any other movie experience where you go to see a movie and you're nervous. It's like exactly yes. like he said, going to a sports team and you want to see them win. Yeah. At the same type of, you can get those nerves for Bond. And there isn't any other franchise I can think of where I get that. It's, I'll tell you, it's, it's even like when your, you know, kid is in a recital or a play or yes, you know, doing piano. Yes, yes. And, and I don't and have kids, stage but I can and you're imagine. Like, you want to yeah. be supportive and you want to be excited, but you're like, oh my gosh, please make them yeah. do good, make them do good, yeah, make them yeah, do good. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like that even yeah. with um, the brands. When the brands have their launches, the Bond launches, right. I'm kind of nervous for them. Like I'm like, I know how hard and how long they've been working on these things. You don't want them to flop. Exactly. Like you get, you just get emotionally involved. Yeah. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? It's, it's, I think that's one of those things that only the Bond fans will get. Maybe the Star Wars fans have that stuff too, or other guys, but it's... Yeah, yeah we need therapy. We need yeah. therapy. <laughs> that's all it is. All right, yeah. so I have a question. They keep coming. We have a minimum of five months yeah. to April. Even best case scenario, five months. Dutch Bond fan as a channel. How are you going to fill up that time? All right. Well, I can I can give you guys a first here. Probably I'm oh. working on a new series. I'm just very busy at the moment, but working on a new series called you know I've I've got recapping 007, ranking 007. Mm -hmm. Now really cheesy, but I'm gonna do a reading 007 where I go over the novels, and I've I've just been really thinking about. Um, a format to present it in a nice way. I don't, don't want to stand in front of a camera. Uh, again, that would feel like copying Kelvin. So I want to get images in there, do it well, and, and 
review them in a fun and similar way to the how I did the movies. That's coming. The Casino Royale one is in the, in the making, but I'm still uh, nice. still in the works for that. I'm also I've been working on that comic book for years, the Casino Royale adaptation, and I've had this plan to get five of them printed when when they're done and sent them to you, Joe Darlington, Calvin Dyson. And John from Haphazard Stuff, and, and keep one myself, and then maybe just distribute them digitally to to other fans that want them when it's done. But I'm, that's like a casual project I'm working on by myself, and it's it's not something officially licensed. But I want to get that done as well. It's uh, that would be amazing. Up. So you're definitely getting a copy when it's <laughs> when it's finished. We should do a video yes. when we all receive them after we've read it to get in there yeah. and kind of like do a, like a review or something. Yeah, yeah, and don't expect like the the official graphic novel. Like, I, I think it's going to be around sixty pages of my own artwork. Fine. I'm at the halfway point right now in the in the thing, but uh, yeah, that's it's it's like a long term casual project I'm working. We on need right. those though. We need those yeah. because seriously, like that is other than like a sporadic thing about a video game coming out, which that video game could be coming out in a year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. They, they still need That's to hire exactly. developers, but yeah. you know, we we probably aren't going to have too much until I would imagine February. Um, no. So we've got to fill the time. How? Who do you consume? Wh who do you listen to and watch from a, a creator standpoint? Oh, you and, and no, Kelvin, no, 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 no. Oh, do you mean something about know, you and Kelvin, Joe Darlington, mainly the guys I just named. Um, those are, and James Bond Radio as well. I listen to them uh, a They're lot. Great. But uh, it's definitely uh, a Do lot of my stuff. Do you have any favorite Instagrammers? Stuff, you know, and like I said, a lot of my stuff is, is mainly YouTube. I do follow some Instagrammers, mm. but um, I also follow like my, my casual friends. So it's it's both on there. But I, I'm mainly into the, the videos and stuff. So James Bond Radio, I watch them on YouTube as well. So yeah, I do too. Yeah, so... Um, but no, I love those guys. I've been following all of you uh, for quite some years. Haphazard stuff was one of the first ones I've started yeah. to get into, as I've told you before. And Kelvin, he's doing a lot of stuff lately. Well, not just lately. The, the last, and um, always great stuff. I've actually been watching one of his videos just before uh, recording this. So, Which yeah, one was we'll, it? We'll definitely oh, it was the, the new deleted scenes uh, that he did today. The, oh, I haven't seen the, that yet. Okay, well, he did another one where he, he started talking about deleted scenes that were never shown. So oh. I, I, I'm at the halfway point. I haven't seen the whole thing, but recommend it. <laughs> he, he just did one, uh, a GoldenEye review, the N64 GoldenEye. And it yeah. was so funny because he, did you see that one where he went back no, in time? I heard in my live chat that some of you guys had cameos in there. You, I don't want to give anything away, but he, he goes back in time. And that is the portion of the video it is not to be missed. It is hysterical. He's okay. so creative. Yeah, no, it's on my watch list, no question. It's uh, definitely, uh, oh, now, now I'm really excited. So I, I take it you're in there too somewhere. L little tiny, I mean, literally, you blink blink and miss it, but it was fun. Oh, cool. Oh, all right. No, no, I'll, see, I'll, I'll check it out after this probably. But uh, yeah, no, I'm a big fan of his channel, always have been. Good. Well, don't, don't stop what you're doing because well, this is the stuff not. that's going to feed us. Yes, absolutely. The All stuff right. is coming on my end as well. It's just uh, there, there have been delays, but there's always uh, there's always stuff coming. Good. I finished what I'm started on with the reviews as well. I'm, I'm never the kind of guy to start something and not finish it. So there's always stuff in the making. It's going to happen. <laughs> yes. Sounds good. Jerome, thank you so much for having this chat about No Time to Die, State of the Union. I think we absolutely. had a nice balance of things that we're concerned about and things that we're really excited about. I agree. And, and thanks a lot for having me. It's always a pleasure. Of course, man. All right. This has been Dutch Bond fan and David Zeritsky from the Bond Experience. We'll see you all real soon. Take care. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.